Good morning and Merry Christmas. Before Mass begins, please take this time to silence your mobile devices. To assist in your participation in today's Mass, a program containing the scripture readings and music can be found on the tables at the entrance. Our celebrant for Mass is Father Hammond. Please stand as we begin our celebration. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome everybody here to St. James, a very Merry Christmas here from the altar, and also to all of you who are on the live stream and also in the loft. Welcome. Brothers and sisters, let us enter into these Christmas mysteries. This is the place to receive hope, faith, love 
those things for which we so ardently and often unknowingly long. And so to enter into these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, making this way open for the Lord. Indeed, this was the whole purpose of Advent, so that he may come and console us with his presence. And so we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. of human nature, and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes 
the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. At the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refugence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. 
When he accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you, or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be my son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says that all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this Christmas day, the church brings to us perhaps, at least in my opinion, the single most profound piece of writing that there exists. of 
what was before we were. And it speaks of what gives us what we are. What provides a foundation for whatever you may do or not do. These words here, which you can, you can find them on a phone, you can find them on a computer, you can find them in a Bible, obviously, hopefully. And yet they come to us today in a different manner. They're proclaimed to you, if indeed I've proclaimed them. And they're proclaimed so that precisely what is said may be realized. We celebrate the coming of Christ, and this same Christ, what came to be through Him, was life. And this life was the light of the human race. Now, I can devolve this into speaking about what life is, or what light is philosophically, and build it back up, but we don't have time for that today. It's Christmas. I simply present to you the mystery. And as I say often, it's not an Agatha Christie mystery. It's not a Flannery O'Connor mystery. Something that, if you read the last page, you know, you, you ruin the whole thing. Read the last page of the Gospel of John, you're not going to figure what this says out in two seconds. It's something that can progressively go deeper, ever more. You can enter into it more and more. In fact, it's more that it envelops you in a greater way. Because the very reality of God is expressed in these words. And they come to you so that you may experience that same God. We saw in the first reading that the prophet Isaiah announces this with joy. This proclamation from Isaiah is the proclamation of someone who's ecstatic, who can't hold in what he's saying. I mean, I don't know when the last time you said something like this. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring glad tidings. All right? Feet, for the Hebrew people, are the grossest part of you. Okay? They're the part that becomes dirty. They wore sandals. They went everywhere in a dusty place with sandals. Feet smelled. They got dirty. They were gross. So when he says, how beautiful are the feet, he's saying even the most contemptible part of this is beautiful. And why? It's him who brings glad tidings. Glad tidings to who? To who? To the ruins of Jerusalem. That the Lord comforts his people. That finally he's bared his holy arm. Finally he showed his power. And so he cries out, finally, that this thing that I looked at, this life, so-called life, now I see that it's truly life. Now I see I'm vindicated, as we heard last night, against my enemies. Now I see there's finally good news to hear, and perhaps we can appreciate that maybe for the first time this year a little bit more. That this is good news, this is gospel. The, what you hear from I don't know who isn't news. News presents you something new. And all we've hear, heard this year is the same old thing. Which, to put it in a kind of morbid way, is people get sick, people die, and people are afraid of dying. But when has that ever not been the case? We've always been that way. And that's why we're acting the way we do now. How is that news? How is that anything special? How does that bring to you anything new? How does that save you from anything? In fact, it does the precise opposite. It makes us turn in on ourselves to contemplate only our needs, to contemplate only what may harm us, and what's Christian about that? What's new about that? Where is there life in that? 
And so the Prophet proclaims, how beautiful the one who proclaims something different, something new, glad tidings, that the Lord is King, not a doctor, not a priest like this. God help us if I ever became king of anything. The Lord is king, your God is king, and they cry for joy, seeing, it says, directly before our, their eyes, the Lord restoring Zion, his holy city, the place where he dwells, restoring it. That again, this life has come, this life that was in the beginning is making itself manifest before your eyes. This is what Christmas is about. You know, you see the bumper stickers that say, you know, keep Christ in Christmas. And I'm not against that. I'm on video. I'm being recorded. I'm not against that. But there's something more profound that we have here. It's not just, and, and I'm going to say this, whatever Christmas Mass I ever say, probably. It's not simply that we call to mind, you know, Jesus was born in such a humble way or such a beautiful way or such a this way or that way. No, but we proclaim this mystery is precisely something that's open for you. Something to be lived, to be realized, to be accepted today, now, in this moment, as the words flow out from my lips and exist in history only after. That the Lord comforts his people. The psalm says that we've all seen the salvation, the saving power of God. You can also say it's salvation, but... The second reading tells us, if, if we don't realize existentially this importance, the second reading says, listen, in the past God spoke in partial ways. He, even what was just from the essay, that, that's partial. And now he's spoken to us through his Son, through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence, the shining forth, the brilliance, you could say, of his glory, the very imprint of the being of God. Now, before I circle back to the gospel and finish, a few perhaps rhetorical questions. I can know only so much. You know, I learned music since a young age. I realized quickly, I can't play all the instruments. I'll never learn all of them. I can maybe get good at two during my whole lifetime. And that's it. And I mean good so that someone actually wants to listen to it, you know, like, not like a fourth grade music concert. I can only do so much. I can only know so much. I can only even with my human capacity, like even so much. I'm not even going to speak about love. All right. But, if it's true that God has spoken through his Son, that he's made presence to you, this refulgence of his glory, then you can know, in a sense, you have access to the one who knows all things, who can do all things, who can love all people, I'm tired of hearing how much everybody loves humanity. Loves human. Oh, I, I just care for everybody. I'm tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it because this, those words come out and then venom comes to the person in front of them. Venom. If you walk through the streets today and you wear a Roman collar, that's what you get. So blessed are you for not having to wear a Roman collar. But brothers and sisters, let us not pretend. Let us realize, yes, where we are, but also where the world is. Also where the church is. And let us turn to the one who has established it in its proper order. Let us realize that he is calling out to you. Me, I'm human, I'm poor, I'm a sinner like you don't understand. I don't have enough love for all of you by myself. If only I did, perhaps more people would believe in God. But now I don't. And so Christmas comes as a good news for me because this one 
who was from the beginning, who knows all things, who created all things, who created me. This one has come and said that he loves me. Because there's no other reason for someone to leave complete beatitude, bliss, happiness, ecstasy, other than love. He was in the world, and the world that came to be through him. And the world didn't know him. Contrast that with everybody who does a little bit and wants to be recognized so, so much. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. And this isn't speaking about the crucifixion, brothers and sisters. This is speaking about the nativity. But to finish, to those who did accept him, to you who have this choice now, it's a choice presented to you every time the gospel is proclaimed, you have this choice now, to those who did accept him, he gave the power to become children of God, and if you've had the time to be at my super circuitous daily mass homilies, a child of God is one who has the same nature of God. I look at parents with children here, some of you, and your children look like you, for better or for worse. Now, sometimes it's hair, sometimes it's noses. For example, I have my mother's nose. Everybody tells me, never seen it, don't realize why people say that, but they say that. Now, if you're a child of God, that means you. Someone can look at you and they see what? God. God. This is what the world needs. And this is what we ourselves need. The possibility doesn't even occur to us that this should happen. That which proves that it's something supernatural. We don't think, you know, in whom have I seen God today? When precisely that is the mission of the Christian. To make God present in a world that is afraid of everything, frankly. A world that gropes through darkness, looking for something to hold on to. Something to have faith in. Something in which you can hope. And if you still have the little bit of the spark of energy of when you were young and searching for the meaning of things, love. Love. At the deepest down, most personal part of you, you're looking for something, somebody, somehow to love. And this is what comes to you. This is what the church offers perennially through the sacraments. God himself. But it comes to you in a special way this Christmas because the power of the nativity, the descent of the Holy Spirit, even into the Virgin Mary at the Annunciation, and the coming forth of Christ into the world seen by shepherds who were very humble people, witnessed to by kings, this is present for you now so that your spirit can witness the same thing. Not with your eyes, not with your mind, for as big as we think our minds are, but with your spirit, something much more profound. You can witness the same nativity today by the fruit of the grace of God. Brothers and sisters, let us rise together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not named, consubstantial the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, as his heart and to bury he came back. For our sake he was crucified on the Lord's Pilate. He suffered death and was buried rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. It's enough. We rejoice in the goodness of God as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. With trust in God's love, we present these needs to the one who gave us his only begotten Son. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all who serve the Church, that God will inspire them to lead the Church to deeper faith and greater love during the Christmas season, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples on the earth to know peace and goodwill, reconciliation and forgiveness, and an end to terrorism, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, that they may be welcomed into this world with joy, nurtured and cared for as they grow, and encouraged to dream great things, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing darkness, For those with depression, those who are grieving, or those living amidst crime and violence, that the light of Christ may scatter the darkness and bring hope to their hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grieve for their departed loved ones may be consoled by the promise and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our petition book, and for those which we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we praise you with joy for having sent your Son into the world. Give us grace to be faithful to the gospel we profess. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For on the feast of this awful mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in us. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation. And calling a straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, Nellie and Jeffrey, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by their protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants Virgilio and Josefina, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with your life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom be thy will be done, on our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. time when we are not able to take communion, let the words of St. Alphonsus Liguori strengthen us in our resolve to wait patiently for that moment when we are once again able to receive the body of Christ. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. My well, brothers and sisters, before the final Christmas Mass at this parish concludes, as typical, there are announcements. Wouldn't it be a Catholic Mass without them? So, the first announcement is that the Solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, on Friday, the first of the year, is a holy day of obligation, and so Masses will be at 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Second, we're looking for a sacristan to help with the 12 noon Mass, so if you're interested, please contact the parish office at the usual number. And finally, the poor box today will benefit St. Martin's Cloak. With that, thank you for allowing me to be a priest on my first Christmas here. My first Christmas as a priest, period. If you're watching again on the live stream, I don't... <laughs> you guys are funny people. But anyway, thank you for joining us as well. And thank you to Marcus and company for putting that and making sure it all works. You can clap if you want. I mean, that's, that's totally appropriate. <laughs> And then thank you to our beautiful voiced cantor, our music director, Giuliano, for his Christmas here too. And thank you to all the people who decorated. I don't know who you are or where you are. I mean, I saw your faces, but um, thanks to them too, because they've made this really a joy to be in this sanctuary and in this church today. With that, we're going to do a solemn blessing because it's a solemn day. So. When you hear the cadence of my voice fall, just give me a hearty amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. May God, who will, that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.